Hi, Emperor. Today I have a story to tell you. The Wolf and Seven Kids. There was once upon a time an old god, who had seven little kids, and loved them with all the love of a mother for her children. One day she wanted to go into the forest and fetch some food. So she called all seven to her and said, "Dear children, I have to go into the forest. Be on your guard against the wolf. If he comes in, he will devour your all, skin, hair, and everything. The wretch often disguises himself." But you will know him at once by his rough voice and his black feet. The kid said, "Dear ma, dear mother, we will take good care of ourselves. You may go away without any anxiety." Then the old one breathed and went to her way with an easy mind. It was not long before some, before someone knocked at the house door and called. Open the door, the children. Your mother is here, and has brought something back with her and each of you. But the little kids knew that it was the wolf. By the law. By the rough voice, we will not open the door. Cried they. You are not our mother. She has a soft, pleasant voice, but your voice is rude. You are the wolf. Then the wolf went away to a shopkeeper, and bought himself a great lump of chalk. Ate this and made his voice off with it. Then he came back, knocked at the door of the house, and called, "Open the door, the children. Your mother is here and has brought something back with her for each of you." But the wolf had laid his black. Paws against the door, and the children saw them and cried. We will not open the door. Our mother has not black feet like you. You are the wolf. Then the wolf ran to the beggar and said, "I have hurt my feet. Rub some dough over them for me." And when the beggar had rubbed his feet over, he ran to the mill and said, "Strew some white meal over my feet for me." The miller thought to himself, "The wolf wants to deceive someone," and refused. But the wolf said, "If you will not do it, I will devour you." Then the miller was afraid, and made his paws wide for him. Truly, this is the way of mankind. So now the wretch went went for the third time to the house door, knocked at it, and said, "Open the door for me, children. Your dear little mamma has come home." And has brought every one of you something back from the forest with her. The little kids cried. First, show us your paw, that we may know if you are our dear little mother. Then he put his paw into the window, and when the kids saw that they were white. They believed that all they said was true, 
and open the door. But who should come in? But the wolf they were terrified and wanted to hide themselves. One sprang under the table, one second into the bed, the third into the stove, the fourth into the kitchen, the fifth into the cupboard, the sixth under the washing bowl, and the seventh into the clock case. But the wolf found them all, and used no great ceremony. One after the other, he slaughtered them down his throat. The youngest, who was in the clock case, was the only one he did not find. When the wolf had satisfied his appetite, he took himself off, laid himself down under a tree. In a green meadow outside, and began to sleep. Soon afterward, the old girl came home again from the forest. Ah, what a sight she saw there! The house door stood wide open, the table, chairs, and benches were thrown down. The washing bowl lay broken to pieces, and the quilts are pillow were pulled off the bed. She sought her children, but they were nowhere to be found. She called them one after another by name, but no one answered. At last. When she came to the youngest, the soft voice cried, "Dear mother, I am in the clock case." She took the kid out, and he told her that the wolf had come and had eaten all the others. Then you may image, imagine how she wept over her poor children. At length, in her grief, she went out, and the youngest kid ran with her. When they came to the meadow, there lay the wolf by the tree, and snored so loud that the branches shook. She looked at him on every side, and saw that something was moving and stuffing. Striking in his gorge belly, ah, heaven! She said, "Is it possible that my poor children, whom he has wild down for his supper, can be still alive?" Then the kid had to run home, and fetch scissors, and a needle, and three. And the goat cut open the monster's stomach, and hardly had she made one cut. Then one little kid thrust its head out, and when she cut farther, all six sprang out one after another, and were all still alive, and had suffered no injury whatever. For in his greediness, the monster has swallowed them down whole. What rejoice there was! They embraced their dear mother, and jumped like sailor at the wedding. The mother, however, said, "Now go and look for some big stones, and we will fill the weak." Bears tormack with them while he is still asleep. Then the seven kids drag the stone tighter with all speed, 
and put as many of them into his stomach as they could get in. And the mother sealed him up again in the greatest haste, so that he was not aware of anything and never once stirred. When the wolf at lunch had had his fear of sleep, he got on his legs, and as the stones in his stomach. Made him very thirsty. He wanted to go to a well to drink, but when we he began to walk and move about, the stones in his stomach knocked against each other and rattled. Then cried he, "What rumbles and trumbles against my poor bones?" I thought was thought six kids, but it feels like big stones. And when he got to the well and stopped over the water to drink, the heavy stones made him fall in, and he had to draw. Miss Miss Labry. When the seven kids saw that, they came running to the spot and cried around. The wolf is dead. The wolf is dead, and dance for joy round about the well with their mother. <laughs>